We're going to talk about low side switching and computer controls. We need to understand that we've been talking so far about logic devices controlling a signal. Quite a few of them are going to do low side switching. That means ground is supplied to a particular device that has B plus as a source already and only needs a ground to energize. Typically, fuel injectors are ground enabled, low side drivers. A lot of fuel pump relays have low side drivers. A lot of ignition coils have low side drivers. And a lot of idle air control coils have low side drivers. Let's take a look at full blown schematics. We're getting to be big boys and girls now. We're going to look at real schematics. We're looking at a diagram. The PCM or ECM is on the bottom. It's got all of these FET switches in the ground side. These are all injectors. They're wired into a fuse up there to power them up. So they all have power on the top and the computer control system is going to supply ground to turn them on. When we start analyzing this circuitry, first we've got electrically. Electrically, are they operating normally? Do we have normal resistance in the injector? Do we have full voltage? Do we have good grounds? We can test that by looking at current flow and see if the current flow is normal. That tells us if everything's normal. We can look at the voltage signal on a lab scope and we can see the battery voltage, we can see the ground, and we can judge them. So when we get into this level where we've got switching, we've got a new dimension being added. Maybe we want to go beyond just using our volt ohmmeter. Maybe we want to go to a lab scope, and maybe we want to look at current to look at this. When we get advanced, we're going to do that. Then we've got to go one more level down when we get into computer control. What is the logic the PCM is using to turn these injectors on? Why does the PCM turn on injector number one? for the length of time it does, and for the timing where it turns it on. Let's look at some other things we could be talking about. Let's talk about relay drivers, and we're going to use fuel pumps as an example. The first thing we do when we get a relay is we got to determine do we have a high side driver, which is supplied B plus, or do we have a low side driver that's going to enable it. A low side driver uses ground to activate, high side driver uses B plus. Look at the top. We notice on the left side of that in fuel pump relay, that it goes over and connects to the EEC power, PCM power relay, which goes to a fuse. That tells us that we're connected to B+. Now on the right, we show you a diagram of the PCM. In many cases, you may not get that picture. We have this here for instructional purposes, and we're going to talk about testing later on. We'll be using that schematic. So if we only can see one side, look at the one on the bottom. The ground is permanently attached to the engine. So that's not going to change very much. So what we know is the inside of the computer must be switching B+. Let's talk about how we test these. We'll start with our low side system. When a low side driver is energized, it will be under 1 volt, almost always under 0.6, in some case down as low as 2 tenths of a volt energized. That tells us we're supplying a ground to an injector and most of the voltage available is dropped by the fuel pump relay coil. At the bottom, we have B plus when it's energized. Going back to our basics, we talked about and we keep bringing up. We said if we have no current flow, we will not have a voltage drop. So we open the ground and we de-energize this relay coil. There is no current flow, therefore we see the full B plus leaving the PCM power relay coming into pin two there of the fuel pump relay. The logic is we're de-energized when the car is not running. We energize it when we turn the key on for a few seconds, and we keep it energized as long as we're seeing a crankshaft position signal. So we've got some logic to talk about. We're going to be talking about that more as we get into some of these other diagrams. We have to know what this information is being used, and you'll see what we're talking about. Let's talk about the factors affecting coil current on any relay. It's a direct function. B plus supply. Low B plus may not activate the relay because of reduced current flow. Ground can do the same thing. High ground voltage drop will reduce the current flow. It's all caused by unexpected resistance. You say, oh, yawn, this means nothing. We had a car, wouldn't idle when you started it up in the morning. And people going, oh, it can't be solved. We've had three or four shops work on it. It's the impossible. Starts fine all day. Leave it overnight. The next morning it won't, it won't idle. We found out when the car first started, it was running about 11.8 volts because of a loose alternator belt. This happens to be an older vehicle with a, a V-belt drive. 
The reason it wouldn't start in the morning is the battery never fully charged and it ran down overnight. And when you started it up, the idle air control was a little bit dirty. We didn't have full B plus and it stuck. Once you got the charging system up and going and the belt started gripping enough, you got some charging voltage, then it started working properly. But the idle air control didn't work because it didn't have proper voltage applied. Yeah, this is back to the old basic stuff. And we use this basic stuff to solve a problem. See how we're trying to tie this together. Now let's talk about looking at these control signals. Let's say we come in here with our voltmeter and it's energized and this signal is too high. This signal is the ground coming from our ground on the chassis through the computer back to terminal one on the fuel pump. If this voltage is too high, you may or may not get the fuel pump to activate. Now, these are pretty reliable. It'd have to be pretty bad before they wouldn't energize. But the point we're making for you is we have to have a good ground on the PCM in order to supply a ground through the driver to get it to the fuel pump reader. Back to our basic stuff, we say we have to have a good ground all the way around to make the system work. This is another indication of that. Let's go ahead and look at some other things about this control signals on high side switching. High side switching, we come out of the computer with B+. Is B plus normal? We know we have a high side switcher because it's permanently grounded. Here we look for B plus. What we need to do is we need to understand that there's two parts to a relay. A mechanical switch that closes because of magnetic attraction from the coil. We've got a coil that energizes under command from something in the PCM using a logical reasoning to cause it to energize. In our future diagrams, we're going to have to be studying these and understanding these extra signals. And some of them are going to surprise you how complicated they are for something as simple as starting the car. Let's go have a look at some of our more advanced electrical diagnostics using some more complete diagrams of full automotive programs. We have to understand more details.